here we see the Brazilian black tarantula, native to the rainforests of Brazil. It can take up to eight years for this thing to reach maturity. Like many New World tarantulas, the hair on its legs can flick as a potential predator will cause inflammation and an allergic reaction when they bed into skin. In the wild, they mainly eat insects and sometimes birds, and unlike many spiders, they don't spin webs. Here, we see a troop of giant prickly stick insects. Hence the name, these insects look like sticks to act as camouflage from predators. Females have tiny wings that are unable to sustain flight. However, males are thinner and have wings capable of flight. Females are able to flex their abdomen, which causes the eggs to be flicked away for dispersal. Here's a famous stick insect, the walking stick, native to southern Asia. They can grow to be a foot long and belong to the same family as leaf insects. Like other species that exhibit incomplete metamorphosis, metamorphosis the adults get wings after their final mature molt. Their wings are too small for flying, but do flutter to assist slowing descent during a fall. This is a spotted bird grasshopper, native to North America. Grasshoppers are mainly herbivores. In the wild, they mainly eat grass and other types of foliage. They range in a wide variety of forms and colors from shades of yellow, brown, or green. After hatching from an egg, their juvenile stages look like the adults. Egg-laden females poke the tips of their long abdomens into the, the soil to deposit clusters of eggs. Grasshoppers usually only live for about one season, so they die when the hard freeze falls. This is the red-legged millipede of Tanzania. This millipede species exhibits sexual dimorphism with different appearance between the two genders. Females are dull black while males are shiny black. Millipedes can curl up to defend themselves using their hard exoskeleton for pr protection and it excretes a noxious liquid that makes it smell bad and taste bad to deter predators. Welcome to the dragon's lair because this is the largest lizard in the world, the Komodo dragon, native to the island of Komodo, the island of Rinka, and a few other islands in the Indonesian archipelago. This lizard may not be up have the ability to breathe fire or fly, but the Komodo dragon is not without power. Its saliva contains a potent venom that pre prevents its victim's blood from clotting. Just like all other monitor lizards and with snakes, Komodo dragons flick their tongues in and out, which they use as their sense of smell to quote unquote, taste the air. In the wild, they mainly eat monkeys, goats, birds, and wild pigs, but have also been known to take down water buffalo. After the eggs hatch, the young spend their lives up in the trees where they will be safe from other dragons. The Komodo dragon is threatened mainly due to rising sea levels and poaching. Here we see the Gila monster, one of two venomous lizards in North America. The Gila monster gets its name, monster, because when it bites, it doesn't let go. In the wild, it mainly eats small mammals and lizards, but will also eat snakes. They are also popular as pets, in spite of the fact that their venom can significantly affect humans. No joke. Shake your tail for the black-tailed rat snake. Similar to most rattlesnakes and other snake species where the snake is found, they will return to the same den each fall for overwintering. These dens often consist of 
dozens of other animals and are often exploited by the snake hunters to harvest animals for skin, meat, and extermination. As everyone knows, rattlesnakes shake their tail as a warning to would-be predators, but contrary to popular belief, the number of rattles on the snake's tail does not determine the age of the snake. Its venom it uses pressurized movable fangs to inject chemotoxin, much like many other rattlesnakes. This is the Bushmaster, native to the jungles of South America. They can measure to be up to 12 feet long, making it the largest viper in the world. In the wild, it mainly eats small mammals and birds. While human encounters are rare, untreated bites would likely lead to death due to the snake's massive size and quantity of venom. And it uses its fangs to inject cytotoxins. Yep, the rhinoceros viper, native to the jungles of Central Africa. They are named for the horn-like scales on the tops of their nose, the purpose of which is not yet known. While mainly moving on the ground, they are capable of climbing trees, and in the wild, they mainly eat small mammals. Much like the Gaboon Viper, this viper's coloring makes for the perfect camouflage. Sadly though, there is currently no known anti-venom to this species, but like with rattlesnakes, they inject chemotoxins, and they can basically strike from any angle. This is the Russell's Viper, native to various habitats in Southern Asia. Like many venomous snakes, it has a body color that's made for camouflage to hide as it waits for its prey among the leaf litter. This species is often found near human activity leading to many bites and subsequent deaths from cytotoxins. However, many of these deaths occur because the Russell Viper's venom is very unpredictable and hard to treat. It's time to puff out for the Puff Adder, what is perhaps one of, if not the, most dangerous snake in Africa. The Puff Adder get its, gets its name from its ability to puff out to look bigger to other predators. In the wild, it mainly eats small mammals, and considering its range, it causes a very high number of bites. Of all the venomous species in Africa, this is widespread and responsible for most snake bite fatalities. African legends say that puff adder babies eat their way out of their mother when they are born. And just like with rattlesnakes, the puff adder's venom is hemotoxic. Yep, and this is the Sonoran Desert Toad, native to the deserts of the southwest United States and Mexico. While toads are mainly terrestrial animals, they are still amphibians and need to be near water to lay their eggs. Like all toads, they have large glands that can secrete toxins as a defense. If consumed, these toxins are powerful enough to kill a grown dog and even humans succumb to the effects of these toxins. As is the case with all toads, in the wild they mainly eat insects. This is the Panamanian golden frog. It was once native to the jungles of Panama. It's now extinct in the wild and now it exists only in zoos. And like the poison dart frog, its bright colors are meant to be a warning of its toxins, which is nature's way of saying, eat me and you will regret it.